Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Jane Mwege. I'm sorry I'm not able to be there in person with you. But I'm very excited to be sharing our work with you today. Our research is focused on designing innovative HIV prevention interventions for um, that are acceptable to adolescents in Sub-Saharan Africa. This is the outline of the presentation. The research was conducted um, in the Accelerate Hub a research consortium led by the universities of Oxford and Cape Town focused on identifying um, interventions that promote multiple outcomes for adolescents. Um, research has shown that adolescents and key stakeholders' acceptability of HIV prevention interventions is crucial for designing innovative, evidence-based, scalable interventions. Higher acceptability can improve the uptake and effectiveness of these interventions. So in our research, we set out to explore the research question, what do young people and key stakeholders find acceptable and unacceptable in HIV prevention interventions? We conducted a systematic review and through the um, in line with the PRISMA guidelines, we identified 32 studies assessing um, HIV, um, HIV, and the acceptability of HIV prevention interventions um, between 2010 and 2022. We then conducted a descriptive synthesis to identify and highlight key study characteristics, and then an inductive thematic analysis to um, identify the reasons for acceptability and unacceptability of these interventions. Um, there are 32 studies that are located across West, South, and, and East Africa. Um, so the stakeholders that were identified across some of the studies include parents and caregivers, teachers, healthcare workers, and policymakers. And the, these are the interventions whose acceptability were assessed across the different studies. You can see there's a range of interventions, HIV prevention interventions. And some key, to highlight some key acceptability findings, overall, the acceptability of these interventions were high. 12 studies assessed prospective acceptability, that is acceptability before receiving the intervention. Um, 10 studies assess acceptability, concurrent acceptability, that is acceptability while receiving intervention. Six studies accept um, re acceptability retrospectively, that is after receiving the intervention. And four studies assess acceptability at different stages of the interventions. In total, there were 32 studies that assess acceptability of, um, of the HIV prevention interventions by the adolescents and um, young adults. And of those 32, 14 studies also assess the acceptability of stakeholders. Using the inductive thematic analysis, we've identified seven key factors or themes that explained um, acceptability of these interventions by both adolescents and stakeholders. And these include ease of the use of interventions, intervention understanding, intervention cost, perceived positive and perceived negative effects, relevance of the interventions to adolescents' lived experiences and social factors um, shaping acceptability. Now, these are the seven themes and some of these themes also have sub-themes. Just to highlight some key um, um, key thematic findings. So both adolescents and stakeholders highlighted that the intervention's relevance to their lived context was a reason for accepting an intervention. And um, in the opposite um, frame, adolescents and stakeholders highlighted that perceived negative effects was a reason for not accepting an intervention. To highlight some key gender findings as well, um, female participants highlighted um, opportunities or uh, for autonomy as one of the reasons for um, accepting um, HIV prevention interventions. So in conclusion, some, some key messages. Acceptability of, of HIV prevention intervention by adolescents and stakeholders is critical if we're going to be designing innovative um, HIV prevention interventions moving forward. There's therefore a need for um, um, youth-led and youth-informed HIV programming more broadly. The overall, the, the young people find these interventions acceptable. However, there are various interrelated drivers of, of, these, of the acceptability and unacceptability of these interventions. And we need to pay attention to these drivers in the designing, in the um, implementation, in the decision of scale-up of these interventions.
if we're going to be designing innovative and acceptable HIV prevention um, intervention, we, we we will require attention to these several dimensions because whether it is cost, whether it is um, concerns about negative effects, whether it's side effects, whether it's stigma, all of these dis determine whether an adolescent or a stakeholder will accept a HIV prevention intervention. And finally, our research also highlights some critical areas for future um, acceptability um, research. So there is need for um, exploring the difference in the acceptability of this intervention across the spectrum of adolescence, whether it's across the gender spectrum, the age spectrum, context, location, as all of these also determine the acceptability or unacceptability of these interventions. There is need for further investigate the acceptability of combined HIV prevention interventions, the packages which are quite popular. And finally, there's need to further conceptualize the construct of acceptability to develop a more robust frameworks and measurement, measurement tools to, so that we can adequately and effectively assess intervention acceptability. Thank you for your attention.